Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. On the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> just had to do it. Oh I just my had God. To do it. Merry Christmas, everybody. Today's cocktail is the Santa Claus Smash. Mm-hmm. Mm, I'm a smash Santa Claus. The ingredients you need to make this delicious drink, because we are actually drinking this today, is a half cup of pomegranate juice, two ounces of bourbon, the juice of half of a lemon, one to two ounces of ginger honey syrup, mm, two to four tablespoons. Um, the instructions on how to make your own are linked below. Then you're going to need some ginger beer or sparkling water if you don't like ginger beer, some fresh mint, and pomegranates for garnish. So here's how you're going to make a Santa Claus smash. You're going to, in a cocktail shaker, combine the pomegranate juice, the lemon juice, and the ginger honey syrup. Shake well to combine, strain into a ice-filled glass, and top with ginger beer or your sparkling water. Garnish with fresh mint leaves and the pomegranates, and enjoy. Well, cheers, and welcome back to Cocktail Story Discussions, you guys. Cheers. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mmm. So this drink is very good, if I do say so myself, because I made it. Kiki made this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I actually put together a bunch of holiday-specific cocktails and desserts, because I know many people will be entertaining. So if you check the link in the description box below and go to Classy Base, you can purchase the recipes for this and many other holiday recipes. Mm, I might have to purchase that one. Mm -hmm. This is good. It's already halfway gone. I know. I got a little refill over here. Um, behind our blush mystery box that we'll get to in a sec. But what have you been up to? Girl, <clears throat> sit this down. Don't want to spill it on the white couch. Right? You saw me gently. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I have been embracing everything about the holidays. I absolutely love the holiday season, especially when it gets down to the nitty gritty. Even though I know people going to be... I have not done well with like presents this year. I totally... For God, I've really just been in the spirit this year and I am now rushing on Amazon trying to get like rush deliveries of things that people want. That mm-hmm. maybe I love can't. that it tells you arrives before Christmas, may arrive after. May arrive after. I'm trying to give gifts for them babies. I went and picked up my nephew, Zane. He's here now. And mm. I went and picked him up from the airport. And I was just, I'm going to shout my little nephew out real quick because that baby, his mom lives in LA. His dad, who's my brother, lives in Atlanta. And so he is he flies back and forth <coughs> by himself. By himself. Mm-hmm. And it took a minute for us to like get to that point, for them to get to that point. I'm saying us. For them <laughs> to get to the point of like being comfortable with letting him right. do that. But my nephew is a kid. He's seven or eight. Mm-hmm. And he has been doing this on his own since he was like six. And so it's just when I picked, I've never picked him up from the airport, like as the, the unaccompanied minor. Like mm-hmm. I would pick him and my mom up if they flew together or my mom would be with me and she would go in and get him. But I went in and got him. And met him at the gate. And it was so funny because while I was sitting at the gate waiting for it to come in, um, these uh, I was sitting there, I was just scrolling on my phone, and somebody was like, Medina! And I was like, (laughs) what is going on? And I'm glad I looked cute. I had just had a photo shoot, and I was going to a (laughs) holiday party. And so she was like, oh, my gosh, I'm literally listening to you and Kiki right now. Like, I love the show. It's so cool to to meet you. So I was like, oh, it's so nice to meet you, too. And we hugged, and and she went on her way. Then I'm sitting there, someone was like, oh, my gosh, I'm listening to you right now. (laughs) <laughs> I was really like, this is so dope. And mm-hmm. then I, they were like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm picking my nephew up. He's, I'm picking him up. He's an unaccompanied minor. And so I'm waiting because he's the last one to get off with the flight mm-hmm. attendant. And mm-hmm. she was like, oh my gosh, we saw little Zane. I was like, <laughs> nah, Isn't it crazy that everybody knows like our family's names and stuff? Yes. I was like, Ooh. wow, that was just like, it just felt really good. It, it gave me like a little, put a little pep in my step. Like, that was a nice little Christmas present from the listeners, even though I still want y'all to look at our Amazon wish list. <laughs> um, I went ice skating with my man at uh-huh. Atlantic Station. It was really fun, kind of scary and tiring, and my ankles were Why hurt. was it scary? I just always, everybody was falling, and people had their kids out. People got their hands on the ice too long, and I was like, you, you know. don't want the blade to cut somebody's hand blade. on accident. I was about to bust my head. My boyfriend did fall and almost bust his oh, head. Dear. But it was fun. It was a, a fun little jolly um, 
adventure. Then we went and drove around the city of Atlanta, went to literally all the different little pockets in Atlanta, trying to like find something to do for nightlife because I don't really like the club. Mm -hmm. So we went to, we hopped around to all these different bars and found so many different new areas in Atlanta where they're like, you wouldn't think they would put stuff here because it's still kind of hood, but they have these really nice like bars and just like little hangout spots. So we mm -hmm. were like bar hopping around. Had a really good time. Saw somebody uh, run out on their tab. Like, <gasps> literally, we went down to Peter Street. I was like, let's go to Peter Street. I haven't been to Peter Street in so been long. There in ages. We didn't even get out the car. I was like, this is too hood. It's just too hood. Somebody was literally, they was running out. <clears throat> literally, when I say running, the two girls were sprinting down the street. One of them was too big to even be sprinting the way she was trying to sprint. And so oh the man God. caught her. He came running out. He caught her. He was like, what are you doing? Where were they running from? They were running from, it looked like maybe. I don't know the name of the spots anymore, but it was right next to where Spain used to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were sprinting down that down that street, and you know that that turn where you have to do like a sharp turn. That's where he, the man, was so in shape and he was like he was fresh out the army. Mm -hmm. He was sprinting with a with a plate jacket on. So, oh yeah, where did y'all think I was going? He he caught. On. I was like, this was crazy. There, you... and then that's embarrassing because how much could your tab really be? Like, Why are you out? You knew you didn't have no money. What is y'all doing? I was like, okay, it's time to go on head home. That's um, rude. I went and, oh, Disney, my niece, she had a recital. Mm -hmm. So I What kind of recital? It was a um a church recital. Okay. So her and my nephew, they go to a little like church daycare a couple days out of the week. And it's like school, like getting them ready for school. And so she had her very first human life recital and it was I said I have to be there for this they sang mm -hmm. about three songs and everybody was crying and falling out <laughs> Disney almost started crying but she held it together and it was just so he, it was so cute Mecca like took her a dress up to school and she asked the teacher will you change her into the dress for her performance and mm -hmm. it was so funny because the teachers were like y'all it's not like a real yes it is real <laughs> right, she's we alive like, she's here she's participating what do you mean real I got her this big bouquet of roses mm -hmm. and I was like the baby needs to know that she is going to be a performer because one thing about my niece is she loves singing and she's not shy to do it oh that's she, good I, like I had taught her it was so funny because Mecca was telling me the other day she was like Tink will not stop going around saying say it loud I'm black, black and I'm proud. proud. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure the kids know. because I you, understand. I do the same thing mm -hmm. with Walker. And she loved the little tune. And so Megan was like, we're at the restaurant. It ain't nothing but white people in Tink. Was, so? She was like, it was so silent. And Tink was like, say it loud. <laughs> I'm black and I'm proud. I was like, that's what she I'm talking about. She saw what was going on. She, she needed to it. let them know. I love to see it. Mm -hmm. And tell them Auntie Dean Dean taught her. Period. So I've just been traveling um, and doing all that type of stuff. What you been up to, Dean? Um, I haven't really gotten to do a lot of holiday stuff. I did do my grandfather's birthday, but I think we talked about that already. Mm -hmm. um, I can't wait to go see my family. I'm going to go see them this weekend. Uh, so I'll spend Christmas in Dallas. I don't think I'm going to go to Louisiana this time. Still undecided, but I can't wait to see my nieces. Mm -hmm. They have been calling me. I helped Walker. Well, I wasn't really much help. So I did not realize that... When he called me and let me know that he was throwing a holiday party. Well, he said, can you help with my holiday party? I'm having a holiday party on the 15th. By help, did he want you to cook? I wasn't quite sure. At first, I assumed, okay, well, the 15th is a Friday. So this is like a school holiday party. And a lot of times they do holiday stuff and they invite me. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, it'll be at my house. I was like, oh, okay, well, what time? What do you need? He was like, I just need help managing my friends. I thought he was joking. He was serious. And I failed at that hey, job. Bad. They were just they were just a bunch of eight year old little boys. They're too energetic, all over the place. You know, somebody's gonna be really sensitive, somebody's not. Somebody and, will be rough and get their head buzzed. Mm -hmm, and not care. And then the adults are concerned and they're like, whatever. It was just a lot. And it was only five little boys. And I know those little boys now because they've been friends for like almost all their lives, mm -hmm. but they were just so wild. And then they wanted to play outside. It was like 40-something degrees. Did y'all let them play outside? Yeah, they were jumping on the trampoline. Sean had it set up really nice. They had one of those, I don't know what it's called, but it's like one of those light things where the lights go up and it's like different stars or dinosaurs or whatever mm. that would be in a room, but it was out in their backyard. And then they're on the trampoline jumping and they had the fire pit going. She had a nice s'more set up. None of the kids wanted s'mores, but they wanted to light the marshmallows on fire, of course. Mm -hmm. Those little boys want to catch things on fire. Mm. Then they wanted to run around the yard with it and we're like, no, you can't do that. There's leaves 
use out here. It'll be a fire. That would absolutely be a desire. Uh, y'all would have been on the school. Mm-hmm. So Sean cooked food for the adults, and I didn't realize until that night that like I could have invited people. So she was like, "Oh, I thought you might have brought some people." And I was like, "Well, this I thought I was gonna be working. Y'all didn't tell me this was an outdoor party. I was in the living room with the dog. It was cold, and I sat out there for a minute. I couldn't do it. But she cooked. He he was responsible for his own catering. He wanted Little Caesars pizza." <laughs> So he ordered his pizzas. I'm sure he had a budget. He had the drink set out. It was a really nice thing. We played a game. Tell me if you've ever played this holiday party game. It's like a big ball where there's prizes wrapped in saran wrap. Mm -mm. Okay, so here's how the game goes. Maybe y'all can play it Like uh, if you do stuff with your families this weekend. But you get different little gifts. With the kids, they had like little Pokemon cards, Dragon Ball Z cards, mm -hmm. fruit snacks, candy, mm -hmm. yo-yo, shit like that. And then with adults, they might have like some scratch-offs, lottery tickets, uh, gift cards, other stuff that grown people might like. And so you have these things and you put a gift in and you wrap the saran wrap around and then you put other stuff. So, and you wrap it really, really tight. So mm -hmm. when you see the ball, it's just this big saran wrap ball, but it's really hard to like unwrap it to mm -hmm. get to anything. So you roll dice and that's how you determine whose turn it is. But we did it like hot potato with them. Of course, somebody has a meltdown because they're counting the seconds of the music before it's the next person's turn. He got 10 more seconds than me. I haven't gotten any again. I was like, oh my God, the children and the meltdown. Can I get another drink, please? But it's a fun game, and you just pass the so ball it's around. One big ball, one big ball. You, you have a Everybody. certain amount of time to unwrap it. Yeah, and then it goes to the next person, but it keeps going <laughs> until the whole thing is undone because it's full of all these different prizes. And so, whoever gets it undone, they get to keep all the things. Well, no, prizes will come out along the way. Oh. So when you get a prize, you get to keep that whatever you unwrap. But when your turn is up, then it goes to the next person. Oh, I know. Them babies was having meltdowns left and right, and it was really just one. Mm. And it's always that one. But it was a good game, and it was funny to watch them play and even funny once I got my drink uh, to see the meltdown because it's just like – it's funny when you see it's always the same <laughs> ones. But it was a good time, and it was good to spend some time with them. Mm. Um, what else did I do? Uh, I have been recovering. I was very exhausted from this month's festivities – uh, so I really just slept mm -hmm. most of the weekend and tried to relax my foot. It was swollen. I needed that to go mm -hmm. down. Had a couple of doctor's appointments. Just did some adulting before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm ready to really kick off holiday season celebration. Mm -hmm. I don't have New Year's Eve plans. I thought I was going to go out of town. But then I remembered I adopted a dog. I cannot wait and to meet this new baby. This is going to be my new baby. When she gets here, I'll have to bring her so that y'all can meet her. Her, I've already named her. Um, her name is Whitley Beyonce Gilbert. She mm. was born on September 20, not 24th, September 4th, just like the queen, uh, 2023. And she's a Virgo like myself. She has beautiful black wavy hair. She's a Cavapoo. Um, I have been getting everything lined up for her. She is absolutely going to be a pampered pooch. Um, and I just can't wait. I'm so excited. Um, I can't. I'm too excited. Wait to meet her. I just and I think what I'm gonna. Personality's gonna be like. I wonder too, and I hope it's what I'm hoping for. What you whoo, want? I want her to be like me. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit higher energy than me, because that might be boring. But um, I want her to be like me, and I want her to just be like a happy little pup. And a cuddly puppy. They say that those dogs are typically lap dogs. They mm -hmm. are high energy, but they like to snuggle and stuff like that. So we'll see. Um, but I'm very, very excited. And I should have got her to be here sooner, but then I wasn't sure when I was going to go home. And I was like, that's too much to be having her fly here because she's not in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Fly here and then get on the plane again. That's too much. And I'm not cleaning up diarrhea in the airport. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, so next year you guys will get to meet Miss Whitley. A little pup, puppy mm -hmm. Whitley Gilbert, Whitley Beyonce Gilbert. Mm -hmm. Wow. I just can't wait. I mm. told Kiki she should have a baby shower. For and pup. you know what? I think I just might. Or a little <laughs> sip and see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come meet my new baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I sincerely can't wait to meet this I'm child. I'm about to be all over black people's pets. I said I was going to make her an Instagram. I said I haven't even been posting on my Instagram for real. Forget my Instagram. It's about to be dedicated to Whitley. No, I never even knew that was a page. Black people's pets? Oh, please go look at the page. Oh, I got to look because at it. Because you know how extra we can be. Mm -hmm. And it's just so much fun. 
funny stuff on there. Even like the names, like a lot of people give their dogs full names. <sighs> and I love that. I absolutely, if I would've got my dog when she was a puppy, like she, I didn't know, she was just- How old was she? She was three already and had oh. been named and knew her name and somebody was just giving her away because they should have never got a dog. And I was like, dang, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be going to take her up off your hands. Yeah. So she's bad as hell. But anyways, <laughs> um, she didn't get to give a real name, but I do like the whole real name for a pet thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's so extra. Um, we didn't get to talk about this because we had already pre-recorded, and I know this is far removed, but it's always okay to talk about Beyonce. Did you see <laughs> the Renaissance movie? Absolutely. With I went on November 30th. I bought my tickets the day mm -hmm. that the film was announced. I was like, I got to get tickets. They were already selling out. I needed to go that day. It was amazing. It was incredible. It was just... I was just in awe. And I went to the concert and people were like, didn't you go? I said, yes. And I wish I would have went to the concert more than once. But and I did gave it. You a, I didn't go to the concert. I've seen Beyonce in concert before, but I didn't get to see the Renaissance concert. Y'all know. I kept being like, oh, I don't know. And then mm -hmm. just. Oh, and then it was go. over. And it was over. And I was really sad. But watching the movie, I felt like I was not only at the concert, but I really loved seeing. And this is in anybody that does anything and you're just the best at it. Watching her give so much gratitude and, and shine and light on the people behind the scenes that really make this stuff happen for mm -hmm. her. And her talking about like the details, like I did not know that when she's performing in one city, the people, the crew is already in the next city building their, with their hands. The, that part is crazy. Set. Because whenever I'm looking at it, just like when, you know, people start posting on social media, I'm like, how are they moving this big ass stage from this city to this city? Like, what are they doing? There's got to be more than one. Mm -hmm. And how long does it take to break this down? Because they don't have this just sitting in the... Uh, Mercedes Benz thing. No. It's not just sitting there waiting. And then to see all of those people, to see all of the women who were doing so much stuff. Now, all that hard labor ain't for me. But shout out to all the girls who do it. Shout out doing to all it. the girls who do it. And then, like, I, I, as soon as the movie started, I started crying. It looked the baby was like, why is you crying already? And I was like, you just don't understand. It like, does something in my spirit. Like, I feel it in here. Yes. And I mm -hmm. had to explain this to him because I was like, just think about it in like another way. Like something that you love and how it maybe changed your life or if it helps inspires you, through, you. Inspires you or helps you even through like a moment in life. The, my reason, and you guys comment on why you love Beyonce so much. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear your reason because everybody has all these different reasons. I love Beyonce so much and I feel like crying every time I see her do anything because she has helped me through so many moments in life. It's not always heartache. There's been a lot of that though. <laughs> But it's sometimes it's just like when you just need to feel good about yourself. She has a song for it. Mm -hmm. When you need to feel inspired, she has a song for it. When you do just need a good cry because you, nothing is making anything better, she has a song for it. If you have been cheated on or you've been being treated badly by men, she has a song for it. If you hate your job, she Woo! has a song She got a song for, for that. It. And you know that even watching this movie was like, this is why we connect so much with her because she bleeds into her her talent mm -hmm. it's and it's no like ugh, you can just tell she really be feeling what we feel and i love there was a moment when she said i am not a machine and i was so happy that she said that because a lot of the times people be like oh beyonce was a machine she was trained and made for this. and she was like i'm not a machine i'm a human mm -hmm. just like y'all i be crying i'm a mom i'm tired it takes me a minute like my kids don't care what i do for a living like and that's crazy just, i'd be like no Little roomy and stressed down, but you know, it's like she got to be mama, she got to be Beyonce, she got to calm us down when people be talking shit on the internet and she has to tell us to stop talking shit back. And, yeah, oh, inspiring she, us. She just works so hard. She just did life so right, and I'm I know she's not perfect and she is human, but it's just like you look at even like now how she now is at a point where she's letting us into her business. She didn't come out just doing that. Like now mm -hmm. she's at a point where she can have fun and be like, okay, I. I did all the things I She's at her, what'd she say? And now I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> and I love that she's cussing now. I Me like when Beyonce too. cusses because she used to not cuss. She used to not cuss. Now she be cussing. She be, mm -hmm. well, she kind of been saying nigga, I think, but in only in songs. Mm -hmm. I, that woman is, she's incredible. Yeah, I think what I like so much, I love the actual music and the songs because whether I can relate to it or not, the energy that she puts into each and every song is just amazing. I'd be crying about stuff that I ain't never been through, mm -hmm. but I felt it through her soul, you know? But I like seeing how hard, like, she works at this. And it's like, yeah, you have, like, God-given talent, but you continue to perfect your craft. You continue to try and learn more. You've never 
seem like your head is so big and we all think you that girl, but you still are giving tribute to the people who inspire you and you're not shy about doing that. And then even like talking about the behind the scenes people and the process and how hands on she is with everything because everybody doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. And talking about like all of the sacrifices that she made because I think that people, it's easy to look at all the glitz and the glamour and the payoff that she has now and the time that she can afford to take off. But she did miss out on a lot of stuff and I like that she shares that. Mm -hmm. And I also really enjoy watching her be a mother. I love and that. I loved the scenes with Blue. I love the scenes with the twins, but I like that Blue is beginning to talk more and I like what I'm seeing as far as her personality goes. Mm -hmm. I've only seen a few clips when Miss Tina would post stuff that she probably wasn't supposed to post because be Blue I Yeah, and Blue would be in the ground background. Grandma, are you recording again? And it's like, you're not supposed to do that. You Back know mom said no. Mm -hmm. But I just enjoyed so much of it. And I think that even if you're one of those people, I don't know why, but okay, that you don't really like Beyonce, you don't really care about her music. It's not even about that. The whole artistry, if you're into anything, entertainment, production, anything like that, I think that there's a piece of it that you can take from it. And even mm -hmm. if you're not in that, because at the, at the end of the day, it's about you picked a career, this is what you love, and you wanna work hard towards these different goals, I think that you can take a lot of different messages from it. Yeah, even the way she spoke about women, like how mm -hmm. she always speaks about women, is also like how she shows motherhood and I think how she just shows how it's not over for you. There was a, one of her band members, I think the trumpet player. Oh, yeah. She was very pregnant and I think it, she just... Beyonce. And she showed when she told her. She was probably scared, like, I still want to go on tour. Yeah, I still want to go on tour until I'm about to really give birth. Like, I still want to do this with y'all. And Beyonce, I also really love how watching the video, the movie, even though I already knew this, seeing it would hit differently. The way that she connects to so many different communities, mm -hmm. but she always brings it back to I am black. And mm -hmm. let's not forget that. But just the way that she connects to the gay community, the trans community, women, moms, men, hood. I mean, every luxury, like everything that you could think of. Beyonce is like, I can connect with you. And mm -hmm. to me, like the world needs that. Because everybody needs to remember, all right, y'all, why don't you like whatever group you don't like? Mm -hmm. Sit down and shut up and eat a sweet and have a drink and... And all that matters is that you are happy doing what you want to do, living mm -hmm. your life how you want to live it on this fine Christmas morning. I love seeing all of the uh, fans and the costumes and everything because it was fun to see in person, but then to see all the different people. When I was in the theater, it was really funny because one guy who got like a solo close-up shot for a good three to five seconds was in the theater with me. Mm -hmm. He was so excited. And then he was like, ah! That's me, y'all. And then we all got excited for him. Everyone's like, oh, my God. We started clapping for him. And it was just a good moment. Mm -hmm. Everybody felt so good. And everybody left like, okay, I got to go back tomorrow. And then I was like, I wish this was streaming. I want to watch it tonight. Right. I want to sleep in my costume from the concert. And, yeah, I couldn't. So I watched uh, Black is King instead. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a mm -hmm. good watch. That's a good watch. Another, but yeah, just loved it. Another thing I love about Beyonce performances, and tell me if you notice this, I really like how when she sings live, she keeps it the same. Like she does a little, some little extra ad libs, but even with those, she'll keep it the same for each live show that she does so that we can still sing on. Yeah. I don't like when a performer changes the whole damn, why is the song so different? We want to sing too. And if you're going to switch it up, just do a little bit because I know, like it's certain things and I feel like if you've been to at least one concert or you've even heard the concerts because I love that she puts them out so that mm -hmm. we can listen to them live at home. You know when it's about to be crazy in love. Yes. You know when it's about to be certain things. And I love when she mashes up her music with maybe either an old song of hers or like a, somebody else's song. Mm -hmm. And I especially love it when it's somebody who's not that big yet. Yeah. Oh. I just love it. I, mean, I could go on and on and on, but let me stop because this is not the Beyonce episode. Y'all oh, gonna be mad. And let us not make the catch up too long because there was a bitch in the YouTube comments that I, for Kiki. What happened? Kiki, I really wanted to like, I wanted to square up with her and I'm not no, even. No, wait a minute. I don't, I wish I remembered the, the young lady's name, but I don't want to give her too much shine. This what happened? This comment that the lady made on uh, YouTube, YouTube, because they get real loose in the YouTube comments. She said, this is something along the lines of, this is why y'all show will never grow because y'all sit here telling us about y'all's lives and catching up too long. 
Something like that. I mean, what do you think the show is about? Girl, (laughs) but the way that the true fans really came for, I was like, people were like, what are you I didn't see that. Sometimes I feel like when people do certain things, like it's someone that either you know or I know that just Mm. makes a fake thing and they do it. And I'd be like- I didn't even think about that. Well, I think that's rude. I mean, if it was so mean. Hey, it was mean. It was mean. If the show is not for you, you guys, it's okay. It's There's fine. so many other great podcasts out there, as this person knows, because they said we'll never grow or whatever. Go listen to somebody else. I mean, I appreciate each and every one of y'all who tunes in and watches and listens. And I yes. recognize, I'm sure we both do, it's not going to be for everybody. Everything is not for everybody. You don't have to leave comments like that. You just don't. As people change who do any show that they do, the show changes. And even with the catching up, it's like sometimes we haven't talked, we haven't shared anything personal while we've had guests back to back to back. Mm -hmm. We don't get to catch y'all up. Y'all be asking a lot of questions, so we want to share. And we're going to share, even if you don't like it. (laughs) Yeah, so um, get used to it or bye. (laughs) Merry Christmas, bitch. That was rude. So nasty and so rude. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, um, what else? Beyonce... Christmas is coming. Yeah, we did make Amazon wish list. Mine is full of puppy stuff. Oh, mine is full of house stuff. I look. You did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got you some things. Oh, I need I, to take a look at you. I told you I'm late on these Christmas shows. Yeah, I just did it this yesterday. So. <laughs> yeah, so y'all make sure you take a look at the Amazon wish list. It is in the description and Send us some gifts. We love y'all. Merry Christmas. Yes. Um, okay. So this week, I guess we can move on to weird sex. You said a man is not a necessity. A man is a luxury. Like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. Oh, I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. Okay, so this week's weird sex, you guys. Um, this is a weird one. And shout out, I can't remember who sent me this, so sorry. But one of you guys sent me this story, and I appreciate it because this is some wild shit. So there was a guy, the story comes out of Thailand. So he was 37, and he was serving a sentence for theft in a prison mm. in some city in Thailand uh, when he started feeling pain in his penis. Before he went to prison for the theft, he underwent a series of injections to enlarge his penis. But the week before the, all this stuff happened, he was admitted to a local hospital after his genitals became severely infected. Now, if you know you've been out here committing crimes, why are you having any sort of medical procedure? Because you need to take care of these wounds and jail doesn't seem like a safe space for that. Anyway, at some point, While he was in the hospital, he came up with a plan to escape. He called his wife, who allegedly then smuggled in a pair of pliers. Remember, we're talking about his penis, so follow me. So he underwent the surgery to deal with his infected genitals, and hours later, he escaped. He allegedly used the pliers to cut through his ankle chains at around 2 a.m. Videos later published online showed a hunched-over man limping towards a nearby elevator. He was hunched over and holding his genitals. Okay, when the hospital officials noticed he was gone, I wonder how long that took, um, authorities began hunting for him. They focused their search on the surrounding buildings and um, reportedly believing he hadn't gotten far because he still had a urine tube in his penis. I just feel like that would be so painful, but they didn't find him until 28 hours later on the roof of a nearby building. Um, He still had 13 months remaining on his sentence, but with new charges related to the escape, he could face an additional three years. Uh, His wife is also facing up to five years for her role in crime. Ma'am, why did you do that? She wanted to see what that new dick was hitting for. That's what I decided. She wanted to see what that big dick was hitting for. And I wonder if it was big because, well, the story came out of Thailand. So I'm just wondering. Mm -hmm. I do love Thailand, though, and I love Pad Thai. I love Thai food. I have not been to Thailand yet, but I would love to go. Maybe I'll make it next year. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's it for Weird Sex. If you guys see a weird sex story, send it my way. I'd appreciate it. I'm going to start looking for some weird sex. Mm -hmm, Because people be doing weird stuff. Now, there was no sex there, obviously, but it was a sexual organ. And I just really want to know what it looks like 
infected and will it heal? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I want to know if anybody is coming to Brazil with Paradise and Vibe. So you still have time. If you're listening to this now, go to paradiseandvibe.com. Come with us to Brazil. And if you can't make Brazil, I'll be posting soon about Fiji. Okay. So now it's time for this week's topic. So for weeks and weeks and weeks, we were talking about the worst behavior tour. Yes. And we were talking about going to hedonism in the grill Jamaica. And we didn't know what it was going to be like and all this stuff. Well, we went, we saw some things, and we made it back home alive. I didn't know if we was going to burn up because it was looking like Sodom and Gomorrah out there, y'all. It was a wild time. It was, there were moments where I felt like it was more wild than I thought it would be. And then there were moments where I was like, ah, oh, it's not so wild. So what did it's what so funny you that you say that because there was not one moment where I said, it's not that wild. From the second we got off the bus from the airport pickup and checked in to the establishment and walked through the food hall. Because they have the food area set up right to where like the new people checking into the hotels. Like, I don't know if you were noticing this. So many people were staring. Like they oh, wanted yeah. to eat our buttholes. I said something buttholes. to your uh, plus one and I was like... It feels like uh, first round draft picks walking through the <laughs> building. I mean, everybody was staring. And not to toot our own horns, but the four of us were looking very good. Very so. good. Mm -hmm. At our worst. Because it's not even like we were. We have been traveling all day. First of all, flight was in the morning time. We left here at, 11, well, it might have been 12 something because it was delayed. We did not get to the hotel until it was dark. No fault of hedonism or worst behavior tour. It was just the process. So, Flight was delayed, mm -hmm. then going through <clears throat> customs and everything. That felt like pigs at the rodeo. Mm -hmm. And what the fuck is going on? They got to get that together in Jamaica specifically. Yeah. And it had, the reason why we had to get out of line and go to a different line. Oh, yeah, I was wondering. It said that I was traveling with a weapon. And I was like. What? No, I'm not. I did just you like that. You have a weapon. Yeah, I was like, no, I'm not. And the dude was like, well, mom, you got to go in the jail. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to go to jail. I just get scared when airport stuff happens. When I'm, you got to go to a different line. It's like, oh, line, shit. And then you in another country. And I was like, I don't have no weapon. Y'all can go through whatever y'all wanted to no. go through. And then the Jamaican people, I mean, some people can be very friendly. But y'all know what they say about the people over there. They just, it's just... The culture, I guess, mm -hmm. they are not smiling and friendly about yeah. it. And it's already custom, so I guess y'all not supposed to smile. Just, it feels like we're going through a concentration camp or something. I don't know. It feels like jail. Yeah, but when we did get through that, um, we went and got margaritas mm -hmm. at Margaritaville. So that was fine. Once we made it out of the airport. Yeah, we got, got on, the bus. on the bus. And the bus was even interesting because- It was. Kiki and I, this was our first time going to hedonism. Mm -hmm. And other people though, well, before we met, the people on the bus that were with us, um, getting the same pickup as us, like the same pickup shuttle, they were like, people, when we all started talking, some people were like, oh no, this is my 17th time. Mm -hmm. They're coming. trying to give us advice. Um, then some people were acting shy and like, Acting like they didn't know who we were. Then later they talk because it's a long bus ride. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, oh, yeah, I'll be listening to the show. And you knew. And then some people just weren't talking at all on the bus. And then I seen them we eating saw, butt. Yep. Just they, butt. Just eating butt. I not saw a people eat butt either. all day long. <laughs> some people was eating butt and then just going to eat food. I was like, <laughs> oh, y'all are freak monsters is what I'm calling you. A freak monster. I mean, it is the worst behavior tour. Um, but yeah, we did that. We stopped at some little um, beef patty hut. I got sick. You did? Remember, I got sick that first night. That's when nobody oh, saw yeah. me. I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have did that. But I did buy a bathing I didn't suit eat at that little out of there. Patty hut. Mm, yeah, I didn't eat the food. Um, I was very hungry. I will say this. Um, the culinary experience was not what I wanted. But I guess you don't go there to eat mm -hmm. nothing but butt <laughs> or pussy or dicks. <laughs> well, you're talking about like the resort food? All of it. I think if we would have ventured off and went into like the island of like and met real Jamaican people and, and the, the food probably would have been fresh and amazing. Maybe so. I'll never know. Yeah. Not that it was bad at the resort, but it was like a Jamaican Piccadilly. I just wanted to be uh, sampling all of the different oxtail um, brown stew chicken and I wanted all the jerk assortments of everything and 
that's not what I was going there for. So I don't know why I thought I was about to have that. I was just a little hopeful, you know. Um, but yeah, so we go through and it was like. Everybody was like looking like, oh, fresh meat is here. There mm -hmm. were white women, white, white women looking at my man from the second. Every time we walked in the room, if they were there, they were looking at him. No eye contact with me at all. It wasn't even like a, we're going to flirt with her and try to get. They were just all eyes on him, touching. Touching. But one day I got up to go. And this is how I know Now that's a little are, aggressive. They would do it when I wasn't around. Like when we would be oh. eating and I would get up to maybe go get some more something. And then he'd be like, the white lady just came by and grazed my shoulder neck. <gasps> like she came by and touched my And I'd be like. Now I feel like that's out of line because you don't need to touch people. You can flirt, you can look, you can say mm -hmm. something, but to touch somebody? <laughs> it was this same little uh, little white woman, white. And uh, I was like, ma'am, I don't appreciate you not making no eye contact with me. Because mm. clearly he's not interested. Even if he was, he going to ask for me. Um, so we walk through, <laughs> we're paraded through the dining hall. We go check into our rooms. Now let's talk about the rooms at hedonism because what is this, there to talk about i just want <laughs> to let the people know it is not it yes it's we're not saying a place resort, where but it's not like it's not a place where you should go and you want to just chill in the room it's absolutely a place where you need to go and enjoy everything that is outside of your room it's not that and i nice. kind of think it's by design mm -hmm. um this is not uh it's not that yeah. there is ac um there's rooms so there people come and clean your room. I don't know if there's room service actually, but the people yeah, the I don't think they have room up, service. They cleaned mm -hmm. very well. I did like the mirror on the wall on the top on of the, the ceiling. ceiling. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, like I like that, that too. Utilize I that. use that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, looking at yourself, fuck from that angle or get your pussy out from that angle is very sexy. I didn't think I was like, this is so corny, and then I was like, oh no. This oh, I didn't think it would be corny. Mm -mm. I liked it. I was taking pictures and videos and everything in that mirror. Oh. I loved it. Um, I wish I could have it at home, but I have a ceiling fan up there. And I'm like, how could I do this? And I'm like, bitch, I live in an apartment. Relax. <laughs> Wait till you get a house. Add that to the dream list. You was um, not your deposit. But they're going to be like, what the fuck were you doing in here? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, so... You got sick that first night. Did you ever leave your room that night? We did. We okay. went. To, but it was just to like... Eat? Eat. We went down to get food and I had... I was so nauseous and had like an excruciating migraine to the point where I was like, I cannot do this. I just can't do it. So... Did you get anything? I, I brought some... Oh, in the... What I liked about Worst Behavior Tour was in our little swag bags that we got, not only did they provide Kiki and I with bottles of tequila, which I really appreciated... And um, BC powder. So mm -hmm. when I when Siv and Kitty told me that we had BC powder in the swag bag, I was like, "Oh, let me go. So sweet. Let me go ahead and uh, take that because if and they had snacks and there were snacks. Let me say something. Rice crispy treats up. Um, if nothing else, they had excellent hospitality. Worst behavior tour. Mm -hmm. They gave us the swag bags full of the stuff. They put all sorts of treats in there for us, uh, from snacks to things that you could only get in the what is it called, the Weedo Hito Hut. Mm -hmm. Um. They had some real strong goodies in there. They provided condoms, lube. Uh, there was there was lotion. The it BC was some powder. BC powder, some other medication. I want to say there was a dick ring in there that vibrated. Oh, I didn't have that in mind. Oh, hmm. um, <laughs> and a few other things: a water bottle, the t-shirt, mm -hmm. uh, and a few other things. I was definitely using that bag. Because I forgot mine at home to mm. just tote around the place. It was really nice. It was really um, nice. They were really nice. It was cool to travel like that to a place like that with such a, a group that made you feel so comfortable. Yeah. Because I think if I went alone, I would not have had as much fun as I did. And I think that overall, I really liked that particular group. And they were telling me some things about other groups who go there. One, I wanted, I would like to go with a group that's black. That would be important to me at mm. a place like that. Um, and also just um, not 60 plus only, you know, a lot of other people that were there, they were much older. And the normal mm, people mm, that are just at Hito, they that are weren't older. in a so group. If you're thinking of going just by yourself and not like at a specific time with a group. When I tell you the, 
It's mm. gonna be a different experience. It's gonna be a different because listen, and I, y'all, I know I be exaggerating. I'm dramatic. I know that about myself, but I'm not being dramatic when I say this. I saw a woman on a walker. Did you see the lady on the walker? I saw it with the cane. I saw a lady with an actual. walker. Oh, I didn't see the walker. I saw the cane, and at one point, I was at the nude pool, and I saw the cane. I didn't see her, but I saw the cane by the ladder to get in the pool. And I said, well, where is the lady? And then I got concerned because I is saw she okay? her. Yeah, is she under the water? It's a lot of people in there. I've never been to a pool party with that many black people in the water. So I'm like trying to look for her pale ass and make sure she was in there and she was having a good time minding her business. And I was like, all right, I just wanted to look out for her. I've been seeing her every day at breakfast. Yeah, there were some old niggas there. Like I was <laughs> like, what did y'all tell your kids? I know that, because you. I feel like when you're that old, you have to you tell did, somebody where you're going. They're not telling their kids. They said, well, honey, we're going on vacation. We're going to Jamaica. And that's all they're going to say. They must know. Or maybe they don't have kids. Some people don't. Some people don't, but I know some of the people did. And I know some of them were like, maybe. There was an old, old man who was there by the, by himself. And the reason why I knew that because I asked him. I was like, are you here by yourself? He's like, I'm here by myself. Somebody got to know what, where you're at just in case. What made he, him want to come? He said he comes all the time. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he was, he was weird. <laughs> What made him weird? He was the dude. I don't know if, I, if you remember me telling you this because we were all pretty lit. He, it was that night when we were at dinner and they were doing one of those shows and one of the young ladies that you had met was on the stage and she was twerking and her whole butt was out mm -hmm. inside of the butt. And the man, the old white man was watching her and he- That was sitting like to our right. little yellow thing on and he ended up coming oh, yes, in his yes, hand. Yes. And then he ended up leaving because he was trying to get the cum stain out, but he couldn't. I was like, he was so old that he, that, just that, watching a twerk made him come. Mm -hmm. Well, one day when I was walking back from the, <laughs> from the pool, I saw him and I just asked him, I was like, sir, how you doing? He was like, good. I was like, have you been before? He's like, I come here every year. A lot of people come there a lot. There's a lot of regulars. They have I met members. So many. Yeah, I saw that. There's like a club and everything. I was like, huh, so interesting. Yeah. I wonder, um, well, I saw some things. I have an idea why some people come. But then other people, I mean, many people just like to watch. Some people like to be watched. And I do think, outside of all the sex stuff, because it's not all sex, there's still like a freedom that comes from being able to walk around naked and other people are too. And it's not like you're walking around naked amongst Victoria's Secret models. You know, mm. it's like everybody looks different and mm -hmm. nobody is uh, making you feel uncomfortable. I was nervous about that. I didn't know if I would let my own hangups about my body make me feel nervous. It didn't. I was naked a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then You I, were. <laughs> yes. I was. And then... I didn't know like if people would stare or if people would do or say things to make me feel uncomfortable and that didn't happen. And I think a large part of that is attributed to the group that we went with and they really pushed like to respect other people. Yeah. So that was good. Now, the part uh, that they should push some more is sometimes people do want to have private conversations. So there were a few times we were eating or just somewhere having a conversation, me and the guy that I went with. And people just kept jumping in the conversation. It's like, God, I, I know that you can hear us because we're not whispering and it's not something super private. We're talking about this stuff, talking about what's going on and people hear it. So then they want to jo join the conversation. And I'm like, okay, I'm spent on energy of talking to other people today. You're going to have to make them go away. I don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I wonder like what it takes for people to realize people don't want to talk right now. Why are you interrupting a conversation? I have turned <laughs> nobody's facing you it's not open the body language is saying thank you go away what types of conversations would they jump into anything oh so tomorrow um tomorrow i want to try this for dinner what do you think you want to try what are the restaurants again the little stuff like mm -hmm. that or oh remind me tomorrow to go to the gift shop because i need some more sinus medication why you need to jump in that it ain't got nothing to do with nothing we're not talking about second fucking so why, why, why? Mm. Um, um, so, so first night. But that was fun. Mm -hmm. What was your first night like? Because, you know, my first night I went to sleep. I had to sleep. So I was hungry, as usual. Um, so I we left the room. We went and put our stuff down, sat down for a second. And then I was like, okay, I'm really hungry. He was too. So we went to go eat. And we went to the hibachi place. The hibachi was full. So we had to do the sushi. Didn't like it. Disappointed. 
Uh, but met some listeners in there and some other people. So it was really interesting to people watch. We were people watching a lot. And I was just like, huh, I wonder who's here with who. Like in certain groups, it's like an odd number of people. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering, do y'all already know each other? Did y'all come here as a as a group? Or did y'all just meet? <gasps> mm -hmm. And then is it like a couple swapping thing? Like I'm passing judgment, not in a mean way, but I'm just trying to figure out like, okay, I think these four, they came here together. They met up in some lifestyle group probably on Fet Life somewhere and they're coming to do some couple swapping. I think I'll see them fucking in these little cabana things at some point during this trip. Now this couple, I don't know, something seems like he's the pimp and she's the hoe. I'm not sure because he keeps pushing her off on people. Or maybe he's a cuckold and wants to watch. I don't know. So did that for probably two hours, right? <laughs> and so then we went back to the room to relax, took a shower and a nap. And then I was like, well, I don't want to just sit in the room. So I was like, let's go see what's happening Outside. At the nude pool? Well, we wanted to see both pools. Mm -hmm. Nobody was at any other pool but the nude pool. And then we I left the map in the room. You know I'm going to carry my map mm -hmm. everywhere. I was like, well, how do you feel about getting naked? Now, we had talked about this before then. I didn't mind, but I wasn't sure because the guy I went with, he be kind of fake conservative sometimes. Surprise, surprise, right? I couldn't tell. Right. And so I'm like, you know... I just never know how you're going to act because to me, you're fake conservative because you be having all these views and opinions and things, but then in a different situation, you are with the shit. So what's going on? I was fine with whatever, but I was like, I'll just do what you do because I ain't trying to be arguing. I already wasn't feeling so hot, right? Mm -hmm. So we're walking around trying to find the nude pool. I hear sound. There's a DJ or something. There's music coming from somewhere, and we're trying to find it. Run into another couple that we saw at the Vachi place. So I was like, are y'all looking for the new pool? They were like, yeah. Is that what y'all looking for? And we were like, yeah. We can't find it. So Were y'all already naked? No. Okay. we had. I had on my swimsuit. And I had on like a cover-up that I didn't realize looked so much like a grandma cover-up. And people were staring at me that saw me. And I was like, I don't care. I'll take it off when I have to take it off. I don't have to take it off right now. Shoot. And I need to find a towel because I don't really know how I'm going to feel. So we finally find the nude pool. They were not playing. It's like 2 a.m. They are not playing. You got to take it all off. So I did see that you could like take it all off and then put a towel on. And that was the cheat code to get in. So I was mm -hmm. like, let me do that and see how it goes. So we go sit down. And we're watching. It was pretty calm. And then I'm hearing this sound and I keep seeing people run like past us. We were sitting by that fuck hut. I didn't know it was a fuck hut. I thought it was like maybe where the tank things are with the oh, chlorine. Oh, yeah, they call it the happening hut, but it's fucking going on. Yeah, so I hear sounds and I keep seeing people go in there, right? So I was like, go see what's going on. Uh, my foot hurts. So he was like, okay. So he goes to see, and I don't know why I was whispering, <laughs> but I was. I said it just like that. I don't know. It was like, nothing is a secret over here. Everybody's naked. And I had on... I had taken off my swimsuit, but I still had it wrapped around mm -hmm. like I just got out the shower. So he goes to see. He comes back. He was like, it's just a lot, lot of people in there. And I was like, a lot? Like how many? Then I was like, okay, well, help me up. I want to go see. So you go in there and see. It's like five couples in there fucking. And I couldn't really see what's going on because it's dark in there. And all I saw was backs. But they, somebody, it was a lot of people going to pound town in there. And I was like, whoo. I said, well, let me get out of here before they think I'm trying to participate. Help me down these steps. So we get out of there. And then um, we went. And I was like, well, I'll put my feet in the pool. But I don't know if I want to get in this pool water. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure how I feel. Soup. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about it. And um, I also don't want to stand because my foot hurts. So we go sit on the edge of the water and I see people in the little grotto fucking and getting fucked. I saw a lot of little peepees uh, laying out on the side. And then I saw that the food was open over there. So then I went trying to get some jerk chicken, fell, got a pizza. So I came back. Uh, the bar was still open, so got us some drinks. And then we just sat and kind of like people watched. Some people were getting their pussies ate. Some people were, most people were just chilling though, really. It was just a few people getting fucked and fucking, but they were like mostly in like dark areas. So I was like, hmm, not as like raunchy as I thought it would be. Yet. But that was the first day. And then we stayed there for probably about an hour, hour and a half. And then I was tired. Mm -hmm. So we went and laid down. Then day two. Day two. Now, what was your day two? My day two was, was I was- Sunday. Like I was supposed to go on the booze cruise. So the cool right. thing about Worst Behavior Tour is they do have an itinerary. It's not like you just get there and you just, 
you know, you're just like, figure it out. They have itineraries for each day. So they had two days that were, Sunday was a booze cruise, Monday was a booze cruise, and they were split it up into two groups. Mm -hmm. I missed both. Um, af not going to lie, after you came back, I was supposed to go on Kiki's booze cruise, but yeah. I can't remember. I think I still wasn't feeling well, and I was like, I don't want to be That was the day you there. said you had a migraine, and I was telling you, oh, try this medicine. Yeah, I was coming off of the migraine. I had the migraine when we landed, and it was just so excruciating. I couldn't get rid Every time I saw a light, I would get nauseous, and I would need to throw up. So anyways, I missed that. And mm -hmm. then when Kiki and her guy had come back and told me about, told me and my guy about what was going on in the booze cruise, I got nervous. I'm oh, not I shouldn't have lie. told you. I, I knew I shouldn't so, have told you. I was like... Baby, I was like, they just eating butts and pussy on the cruise. Everybody wasn't doing that. It was only a select few. Some people were just vibing and mm -hmm. drinking and talking mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and I, then so I what'd you do? We went to on the Sunday. Pool. We went to the pool. Uh -huh. We um, went to the pool. We got a little tour of the whole facility. I had talked to one of the, I talked to one of the managers. And I was like, "Can you take us to the playroom? Because the the land is so big. Like, yeah, it's like so many twists and turns. Yeah, that if you don't look at the map or if you don't ask somebody to like show you where everything is, you might miss you might miss out on certain things. Like, we mm -hmm. have a Kama Sutra palace. Went to the Kama Sutra palace. They had different classes going on, and we talked to the one of the masseuse and one of the teachers that teaches the pleasure classes there. And then uh, one of the managers who the, the managers be on freak mode too though. They was like, "Well, you need to make sure you go to the playroom. I've been in there and I had fun." Like, what? Yes, girl. So he showed us the playroom and he showed us like the all the rooms. Like, okay, now we know where it's at because on me and baby were like, "Okay, we're gonna come to the playroom, see what it's about." Um, I met some listeners. A the, Sunday was very chill for me. We sat on the beach. We got in the water. That was really it. I know that sounds <laughs> very, very boring. And then mm -hmm. later on Sunday evening, <laughs> they had the first party. Yeah. We went to the party. Mm -hmm. That was fun. But I planned on going to the nude pool. But y'all, y'all, <laughs> I was so, I, I honestly did. I think that everybody should experience something like this because you really don't know. Unless you have, you know, you're in the lifestyle and you're just okay with everything. I didn't realize how uncomfortable I was going to be. And it's not because the group made me feel uncomfortable. None of that. It was just my personal, like things that I was like, oh, this is, I don't feel comfortable around all this. Like, it mm -hmm. was really interesting. Like, I didn't think I was going to be like that. So what do you think was different about this place versus like a sex club? I think that in the sex club, you know that like, there are areas where like you need to have, in the sex club, you can't just, the difference is even on the <laughs> prude side, there was the prude pool and the nude pool. But even on the prude side, what was going on on the nude side was going on at the prude side. Mm -hmm. Not as much, but it still was just, it was just a lot. There was no moment in, in the trip where like, you could just be like, I, I maybe don't want to see butt getting ate today. <laughs> and, and, you know, I really can't even put my fingers on. I think that I'm not really... Was it too many people or just too out in the open? Or maybe it's that you're going to see these people every day for a couple of days. I don't think I'm gonna. it was that I'm going to see people every day. I think it was a lot of it. There were listeners there. And even though other people were like, nobody's looking at y'all. There were people looking at us. They and there absolutely were, people were looking, there to planning like and plotting. Hopefully <laughs> have sex with it. And there, that was a real thing. I didn't need to mention that because I'm not trying to act like we're just like, oh, but, but no, there are people here looking at us. So that, and then another one was not that it's not clean because I don't want to scare anybody. <laughs> but the cleanliness of certain Certain things I was just like yeah, I can't get with this like I it was just to me there were certain parts where it was just like this is nasty like buttholes that was just getting rammed in that are open I do anal it's kind of loose after that now you're in the pool floating like it's naked and or or it's like but you know what it is it's a lot. with that it's like yeah you think about that but it's like how much it's water so it's like if you have on a swimsuit the water is still getting in between that swimsuit it's not like you get out this the pool and your pussy is dry and even at a pool or a water park or wherever a pool at an apartment a hotel another type of resort that's not at all like this it's like everybody is not going to properly shower before they get in and that's just what happens in public spaces i think i think that's how i talk like myself a regular out of public places you're not seeing like people get like there was just a i saw a lot of fluids and i <laughs> saw it so it was like that and to each their own. I wasn't judging. It just anybody. grossed you out. Yeah, it grossed me out to the point where I was like, <laughs> "Dang!" Like I didn't think. And again, I didn't think it was gonna affect me like that. But mm -hmm. when I did get there, and I was like, "Ooh, it's nasty." 
Mm -hmm. uh, that was part of the 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 thing for me. But I di I don't want to just like I didn't have a good time. I had a really good time because just like they were saying like everyone's welcome. You don't have to get naked. There were moments when I didn't like that people were you know making it seem like I wasn't having fun. I'm having just as much fun as you guys. I'm just not doing the same thing. But I am having fun. You're not gonna force me to do anything. There was one person in particular who kept trying to make me take my clothes off, and I had to get real serious real quick. You mm -hmm. know who I'm talking about, I think. And I mm -hmm. had to be like. I don't know if you know who I am yet, but you're about to find out. You're not going to make me get naked. Now, if mm -hmm. someone, if an employee comes over here and tells me I have to take it off, then I will, in fact, take off the clothes. But nobody had, nobody did that to me. I went mm -hmm. over to the nude side. I had my clothes on until I felt comfortable. And then me and my baby took our clothes off, and then we got in the pool. Mm -hmm. And it was fun. I had a really good time. Now, it was weird, like, sliding past people and touching butts and sliding. I was trying not to touch people because I also, like, I didn't want to be touched by anybody who I didn't already say you could touch me, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm trying to respect other people. But at some points it was like, okay, let me get out. Because there's too many big asses <laughs> in here and I cannot slide and maneuver. And all I'm trying to do is another piece of jerk chicken and another glass of cheap champagne mm -hmm. uh, to enjoy my afternoon or morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, while we were in the pool, though, I did. I was having amazing conversations with people that have been there a lot, who were in living interesting lifestyles. And me and my boyfriend were just started asking people questions. Like when we were in the nude pool, just naked, just talking naked. <laughs> uh, I met this girl, I forgot her name, but she was really sweet. And I was like, so. You, how, how many times have you come? She's like, oh, I've been here a bunch. Mm -hmm. And then my boyfriend started asking her questions. Like, so are you like, are you nervous? Like, do, what do you do when you get here? Do you have sex with people? She was like, do I? Yes. She was like, I have three boyfriends. They're all here. <laughs> and he was, I, we've already I heard wish I would have met like her. <laughs> I think you did. Oh, well. I'm pretty sure you did. Um, And so I'm not caught off guard by lifestyles like that. But my boyfriend is, he was like, wait, what? Three. She was, and he was like, "Is anybody mad?" And she was like, "No, nobody's upset." She's like, "This is one right here." And so we met one of the boyfriends, and we mm -hmm. were asking them like how they met and how they got into this, and having conversations with people like that and learning a little bit more than we norm normally get to learn on the show and seeing it. Mm -hmm. That was really interesting. I was like, "Wow." We met a couple that night. We went to go have dinner at the Japanese restaurant, mm -hmm. and we met two two couples. They were together. They were swapping their wives, mm -hmm. and that was just so intriguing to my boyfriend. So he was like, "Wait, what?" What is y'all doing and why? Do y'all have kids? Have a lot of people were doing the wife swapping. A thing. lot I was of people watching. were doing the wife swapping. And I will say, some people looked a little mad towards the end of the trip. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Even some people that were on the plane with us, I was like, mm -hmm. y'all be acting like y'all like living life like this. <laughs> Somebody mad. And so the, the white couples that we had met that were talking about swapping wives... They were like, um, yeah, we do this. We have kids. We just tell the kids we're going on vacation. And we were asking them like a bunch of questions like, you know, how did this happen? And when did y'all start swapping? They were, been doing, they were like, we've been doing this for a few years now. And I was like, I, w I really do be shocked with the wife swapping stuff because I assume that when people are married, you are truly in love with each other and you can't fathom another person being with them. But that's just me and not other people because they were swapped. But then it was funny because then when we would start, talk to people long enough, we talked to them for the entire dinner and... Um, they got to know us. We got to know them. And when it came down to the nitty gritty, one of the husbands was like, you know what? This started, I'm not going to lie to y'all because you really asking questions. And I told him, I was like, oh, I have a podcast. I just really like learning people in their sex lives. And he was like, she cheated on me. Ooh. And that's how this started. And I was like, mm. she was like, baby, I told you to stop saying that part. And I was like, well, I'm glad he didn't because sometimes I really <laughs> do want to know the truth behind some of these lifestyles. And a lot of people that I did talk to that were doing the swinging stuff or doing the wife swapping stuff, somebody just couldn't stay faithful. And now, then, I would be mad, though, if I was her, too, because if we agreed on this before we got, don't be airing our dirty laundry. She, that baby aired it. And he was like, and then he I asked, know you were happy, but I would have been I would have probably slapped him. That's not OK. Yeah. They still swapped and was fucking in a second. We I'm seen sure. Him, and they asked if we wanted to join. And I was like, oh, no, I'm maybe, <laughs> maybe later. I don't even <laughs> know why you said that. You know you was not going. <laughs> The fact that me and my boyfriend thought we were going to go out there and really have a threesome. Oh, you did? We did. We talked about a lot before we get, went on the trip. I do suggest, like, if you're going here for the first time with a couple, I mean, with your with your partner, even if it's not your first time doing something like this, you definitely need to have conversations. You definitely do. Because you don't know what these people are aggressive in the healthiest way. I don't mean, like, people just walking up I think people are just butt. forward. They're very the forward. Best way They're to like, say can it. I eat your pussy? Mm-hmm. Like, they'll ask. People will be direct. So... You know, have those conversations, think about all the different stuff, maybe even run through some porn so that you can look at different situations that you didn't even think of. And to run see. through scenarios that you might that you haven't even been in before. That's what I did. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. so let's say, even before we went to the nude pool, I was like, okay, game plan. Because when <laughs> my experience with the nude pool it was funny because I walked in, I walked to the front, 
And I was like, ooh, I can't I do it. I saw her. I can't do it. And I was like, look at Medina. <laughs> I just talked to give myself a pep talk. We turned mm-hmm. around, walked back out, and then we went around the back part because there was a little back part in the little bar. I was like, let's act like we're going to just get some food. But Eric Dicks was slaying about, about that food area. You can be naked. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, God, God, God. But anyways, it was it was a lie. Well, but I was telling him, I was like, what is this scenario? And we get over there. We get to the naked side. Kiki said they is thrashing and smashing over there, and they are aggressive. So I was like, what if we get over there, and somebody's just like, I want to suck your dick. And they just ask you that. Like, what you going to say? What you going to say? He was like, no, I'm going to say no. And I was like, okay, but did you really want him to? Because mm-hmm. if you want to, you're then attracted do to this it. person. Yeah, I was like, if you want him to, then do it. I was just really happy that like we went and we were on the same page. It's not mm-hmm. like I we went and he was fucking everybody, and I was like, no, wait a minute. I know we said if it happened, it happened, but we <laughs> went and we were just on the same page. And I was so thankful for that. And I'm sure he was too, because you just don't know how somebody's gonna behave in that environment. The girls mm-hmm. were the girls were more aggressive than anybody. I think, I feel like the guys were like, I went there with somebody, but it was like, I did not like walking around by myself because I didn't want them talking to me. Um, I had no intentions, desires to be fucking any of the men there. So, except for who I came with. So whenever I would like go somewhere by myself, like not even far, that's when they want to talk. I Mm -hmm. said, you sneaky motherfuckers. I said, no, no. Oh, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Um, I was taking a picture at the photo booth at the party that one night. I think it was casino night. And this guy was trying to get in the picture with me. I was like, you are not taking a picture with me. My titties are out. Goodbye. You just have to look and enjoy. And mm-hmm. now I'm going to run away. Y'all I ended up leading a Congo line at one point during that party. I saw party. you. <laughs> Naked was, and all. Mm-hmm. Well, I had on the bottoms. It was mm-hmm. just an open bust. I had a good time at that little party. Now, did you... Partake in any of the sexual festivities? I did. I um, I did some light work, um, some very light work, because uh, I wasn't feeling my greatest, um, and I didn't really want to mm-hmm. have a lot of sex. I didn't want to do a lot of things that I thought I was going to want to do, um, because I just wasn't feeling great. But we had already talked about what was okay. And I told him he could fuck somebody else. And um, we'll talk about the details of all that on Patreon. Okay. We did record an episode while a we few. were there. We yeah. A few episodes. It's like four of them uh, that will be going up soon on Patreon with different people who were at the resort. Mm-hmm. Um, who And they shared different experiences. Everybody's experience was something different. Um, but yeah, it was fun. Uh, I did, there was like one girl that we were with most of the trip. Yeah, that was and y'all's then, girlfriend. That was Bay. Yeah. And then, um, there was, there was another girl that he had told me he was attracted to, but nothing ever happened. It was so funny because the last night, I guess he had worn himself out. And I was like, at, at, a, at a couple of points along the trip, I was tired. And I was like, I don't care. Can you take him? <laughs> I Y'all can go do whatever. I really don't care. I need a nap. Mm-hmm. I was tired. The sun, well, the sun wasn't that bad, but I was just tired. It was all that damn walking. My foot was turning into a Subway sandwich. <laughs> it was a lot. It was just swollen. I was like, I'm not supposed to be walking like this. I just need to elevate and relax. I want to see if First 48 is on. <laughs> um, the bed wasn't that comfortable. So every time I laid down, it just was not that great. Um, but yeah, met a girl there and some other people that were nice that I will probably keep in touch with. Um, but it was a good time. Oh, you'd keep in touch. Not normally, but we'll, we'll see. I mean, I just left a couple days ago. You yeah. know how I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not good at yeah. that. Y'all, it was a great time. Oh, it was. Oh, I forgot one key part of the story. Now what? on this day. My boyfriend had left. We have a friend out there that owns a resort. He left. He's like, I'm not, I don't want to be or see or hear about none of this shit you're about to go to. It was when they had the, it wasn't called the booty party, but it was called something else. It was the oh, pegging, the pegging party, party. The pegging party where there were. He said he didn't want to hear he about said, it. He said, I don't even want to be on the, the grounds when this is going on. So he left the whole resort. So I was like, I'm going to go to it because I wanted to see. I never have in real life seen a man get pegged. And I wanted, I was interested in seeing it. Mm-hmm. Don't want to do it. At all, but I wanted to see it because I really wanted to see if they were taking pleasure in this. And so, mm-hmm. you know, we went and when I first got there, you were still eating dinner. So I went in by myself. There were a few guys who liked to get pegged and there were women who liked doing it. So they had a sign up list of like people who wanted to partake. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was very intimate and private. You had to be on a list. It wasn't like just any old body could come in if you weren't participating. They let us go in because, you know, they wanted us to get the food. They had brought us there. Yeah. So we went in and... uh 
It was interesting. Like I saw most of the men were laid on their backs getting pegged, but there was one that had his, he was, he had that thing too, mm -hmm. and was throwing it back. And I had never seen like a man really take pleasure in I that. couldn't really see their faces, but the women who were doing the pegging, I will say they were all moving very slowly. It was just like watching a slow motion video. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, how nice. They They're were very so gentle. Patient. It wasn't pound town. It, it was not pound town in there. And that's the difference between the ladies and the men yeah. because the men was going to pound town down at the pool. Right. The mm -hmm. men was going to pound town everywhere, not mm -hmm. just at the pool. I did have sex in that little jungle part. Mm. where there's like this part like on the way to the nude pool I was like let's go see what's over here so we go over there and it's like um, all these signs and once I got closer to the signs I realized it's like all these people fucking and sucking dick and yeah. stuff on the signs and it's like couples or throuples or groups whoever and they put like their name and the date of their trip and they get a mark on the tree so we found a little bench over there and I had sex out there and that was kind of fun because it was like outside People could see, but it was nobody over there at first. And then... Did people come and start looking? Mm-hmm. Do you like that? I do. How did it start? Like, did you start it or him? I started it because I saw it the first day. And I was like, huh, what be going on over there? Mm. And so then we walked back and I was like, well, let's go see. I'm usually the one that's starting stuff. Or I'll say like, um, do you want to do this to him? Oh, yeah, I told you I wasn't feeling good. Somebody needs to do it, and you're not about to be pestering me. <laughs> oh, that's right. Teamwork makes the dream work. That was smart. Work smarter, not harder. Exactly. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll talk more about Hito later. We but. will. Before um, we move on, just to again, if you guys are interested in going on any of these trips, go to theworstbehaviortour.com. If you're interested in trying something out, you have a fantasy, you enjoy some things, and maybe your partner's people that you're having says we don't, you can go here and explore those fantasies. I also wanted to mention they have a New Year's Eve train ride coming up to New Orleans. So if you're interested mm. in that, go to worstbehaviortour.com and check it out. Mm -hmm. And then they go to Hito three times a year. We went Thanks. on the December trip. They also go Memorial Day. It's Memorial Day weekend, but they say you got to stay seven days. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. And then they go again sometime in August. So check out their website if you guys are interested. And thank you to everybody at Worst Behavior Tour for the hospitality, the opportunity, and all of that. I had a blast. I had a blast as well. Thank you so much for having yes. us. Yes. And before we move on to Diane and Advice and Cocktails, I do want to shout out our sponsor from mm -hmm. the tour, Blush. They sent us these lovely cases. That are some nice uh, kinky cases. They are BDSM kits. And it Let actually, if you can lift it over your glass, it tells you. Oh, it's heavy. I know it's some goodies in here. Y'all, they here. have oh. some incredible items in here. So I'm just going to give you guys a little sneak peek. It's the Temtasia Safe Word BDSM kit. Well, I wish we could have took this to Jamaica. So um, they might have locked us up at customs with this. It looks like right? we're about to take like, back. What a, is oh, it's like little leather bow ties, they have a leather a blindfold, blindfold, ankle wrist restraints, collar, a leash, a ball gag, a mini vibrator, and a slapper. Y'all, this is perfect for dominance and submission oh. play. So hmm. if you are interested, would you use this? Not everything, because the ball gag concerns me. I need to be able to scream for help. Um, I be making niggas mad sometimes and I just can't put myself in that sort of position. I would definitely but use that blindfold. The blindfold, definitely use the vibrator. Uh, Crafted with vegan leather. Come on, vegans. Where y'all at? Hmm. Yeah, this is a very nice kit and it's. I like this sexy case. Imagine taking this to like the sex club. You look like you mean business. You look like you know mm -hmm. what you're doing. And I really love that the bullet requires triple A batteries. Because sometimes they be needing batteries that you not, they not just easy to find. Yeah. I got mm -hmm. a few triple A packages in my place. Mm -hmm. I know, that's right. It's a nice case. You guys check it out. And remember, uh, the next, I don't know how many will be left, but the next couple of orders, if we haven't run out of supplies yet, we'll get a free gift from Blush. So y'all check them out because uh, they got some good, good stuff. If you made it to some of our live shows where they sponsored some freebies, you might have got some good stuff to test out their products. So make sure y'all go to blushlove.com and check them out. And now we will move on to Indecisive Diane. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? What do you want? Hey. 
Hey ladies, it's me, Diane. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This, today I don't have a date idea. Just enjoy spending quality time together. And if you're with someone that you don't love or even like, and you're married to him, just try to fake it today. Be nice. All right, guys, and we are back from Indecisive Diana, and it's time for the advice. If you have a question that you would like to ask us on the show, make sure you email us, advice at cocktailspod.com. Okay. Uh, so, yes. Okay, it says, hello, girls. I've been a listener, I think, for about a year now, and I love you both so much. And I love that y'all have created a safe space for listeners like myself to post anonymously and to vent and get advice back. I know the saying goes, it feel like it feel like if you have to ask, you probably already know the answer. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I've been in a very committed relationship for the past nine years, and I love my partner dearly. But I have a coworker that I'm very attracted to. We've both been flirting back and forth for, I think, three years now, and we've hung out outside the workplace a handful of times. We haven't crossed the line yet, but I know I'm walking on that line. I thought by now I or even both of us wouldn't still be interested in each other by this point. I jokingly told him that I think he loves me and he admitted that he did. I love him too, but I'm not in love with him. I do love him as a person though. I am so tempted to let him have me just one time. I'm constantly thinking about him. I think about him when I masturbate I, and, I, and sometimes when I have sex with my partner. I know it's awful of me to think this way, but I can't help it. Maybe it's naive thinking, but I think getting it out of the way may put me back in check because it probably isn't going to be as good in real life. Tell me, should I go ahead so I can move on or just cut him off completely, even as friends? Girl. <laughs> Is she married? She's not married. Um, but she's in a very committed relationship for nine years. Mm, maybe you don't want to be in the relationship anymore. Like, sometimes I wonder, like, have you... How do people think about that? Like, maybe you don't want to be with who you're with. And that's okay. It's not okay to cheat. And y'all know I used to be saying it was okay. It's, mm -hmm. it's not okay to cheat. It's You maybe should either tell. Especially with a coworker. Where this could go very south. If okay. you don't cheat, you need to cheat with somebody else. That, that can't track you down and tell. Like Maybe you need to go to hedonism. You and need to go to hedonism so you don't get caught. Them people is keeping secrets and eating butt. Mm -hmm. No phones allowed. That's why y'all didn't see no pictures That's from why us. I was like, wow, and they're really not playing. You can't have a phone. You can't have a vlogging camera. Put I had my phone at the nude pool, but I was just trying. I didn't want to get lost. And I need to keep up with whoever and whatever. They came and put stickers on my phone covering the cameras. Wow. And I was like, okay. Yeah, sis. I think that maybe, okay. There's, I think there's a few ways. You have a few options here. You could, the healthy way would be to maybe tell your partner you're feeling like this. Don't you think? Like, tell him, I'm thinking about cheating. I don't know why. But maybe you just want to have sex with somebody else. Maybe you're tired of sex with this person. You're not tired of the relationship or any of that. And that's tr that's real. Like sometimes people haven't fallen out of love with a person, but you might be a person who doesn't really want to just have sex with this one person. And maybe and maybe that's a hard it. truth that you need to face with yourself. Mm -hmm. Or could he do something different? Do you feel like his sex is just the same sex? Could he change something? Or is it really like... Everything with him is great. It's still spicy, but I want something new and fresh. But because when you look at the cheating, but part you got to talk. It, period. Yeah, like the young me would tell you, just do it. Since we're young, do it. But now I can't really tell you to do that because that's not fair to the other person. It's not nice. He doesn't even know any of this is going on. Well, we don't think he does. I but hope also, not. it's like if you decide to have sex with this person, you're now putting the person who you were saying you love and you want to be with at risk for a lot of things, and so. That's not fair. Let's just say this. Sex is great. Sex is wonderful. We all love it. But we all know the nasty things that can come of it. 
Let's say you get an STD, you don't know, and now you pass it to the person, the innocent person in the party who didn't even know this shit was going on. It's not fair. Or you get pregnant, or you just break somebody's heart when or you didn't have to do that. Or the gets crazy, and now you at first 48 episode because he done killed both y'all. Woo, that's a lot. Um, good luck. Have a conversation with yourself and your partner because we are not going to advise you to just fuck that man. And you talking about it might not be good, girl. It might just be the best you ever had. And mm. then you really going to be in for Now you acting crazy. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think we only had time for one. Okay, so you want to do the cocktail? Okay. So we're going to move on to the cocktails. If you guys have a cocktail that you would like to share on the show, please email us cocktails at cocktailspod.com. Oh, we was talking, talking. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Today's cocktail <laughs> it is titled Baby Carrot. Hey, Kiki and Medina. Love, love Baby your carrot. podcast. <laughs> you two are hilarious. I hope you guys are doing well. So today I have a cock fail. More so fail because there wasn't much cock, but there's a tail to it. Anywho, let me get into it. Backstory. I came over one time and things got a little hot until it didn't. When I went looking, literally moving my hands around, I couldn't find his dick. Child, when I did, I discovered a baby carrot. <gasps> I immediately stopped and said, let's oh, get back yeah. to the movie. So how about I decided to give this acqu acquaintance another try? Be being that I'm single and had no partner, I said, what's the worst that could happen? Well, let me tell you. He came by to do something and ended up hanging around. He would say remarks and wanted to, and wanted to cuddle, but I denied. NGA, oh, not gonna lie. A couple thoughts crept up as time passed. He and I decided we should go out for lunch. I tell him I'm gonna take a shower and asked if he needed to use the restroom before I go in. He said no. I gather my things and make sure I close the door behind me, but not locked. While I'm in the shower washing my face, I hear him approaching the door and I and what I thought he said, I, can I take a piss? But in actuality, a peek, I peek. A peek. Oh, a peek. She thought he said, can I take a piss? But really he said, can I take a peek? Mm. So I'm in the shower, minding my business, washing my face when the curtain opens. I stop and ask, what are you doing? He then proceeds to say, a peek. And that's when it clicked. This man started to play and suck my hard nipples and the moans followed. He then told me to lift my leg and slipped a finger in my wet punani while Ooh. continuing to suck on my nipples. Let's just say he got wet, too, with that beautiful black curly hair on his head. I guess she forgot about the baby Carrie. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I felt like I was in a scene from a movie or a show. He tells me to get out and let's finish this in the bedroom. I got out and followed right behind. He tells me to lay down and starts eating my punani. To be honest, it was all right. And no, <laughs> I didn't have an orgasm. This is when it went south. He's struggling to get his peeny weeny in me. And then... <laughs> Weenie, weenie. And then had the audacity to say, I'm soft. You got to get me hard. In my head, I'm like, really, nigga? He told me to get on top and to ride him. And so I'm tired. And I'm tired. His physique is unique. Legs are skinny, but he has a little belly. Getting on top felt like I was on top of the world, literally. Mm. After struggling with trying to put it in, I was over it at that point. We stopped and I got dressed for our lunch. Let's just say that was the last time I gave him a chance. His excuse was that he had a lot on his mind and couldn't focus. But let's be honest, a carrot, a baby one at that, couldn't satisfy me. The rest of the evening went well, and he continues to try until this until this day with his little self. Oh, he continues to try until this day with his little self. He's a sweet guy and has a sex appeal vibe, but just not for me. Uh, like they say, not all men can have all the goods. P.S. This email was in my draft since 2022, and I'm finally <laughs> sending it in, shaking my head. I hope you guys enjoyed my cocktail. Side note, Medina, from a fellow Libra, stop being so hard on yourself. We aren't perfect, and you are enough. Take things one at a time, and don't let the pressure of others and life get to you. Be your authentic self with your store-bought wigs. <laughs> 
<laughs> you did not have to add that last you did line. Not. In the- <laughs> thank you for writing it in. Mm-hmm. Thanks for the kind words. Thank you. Um, thank you guys for sitting in the advice, weird sex, and uh, the cocktails. We appreciate it so much. Make sure you check the links in the description box for everything that uh, you can purchase, sign up for, check out all that good stuff. Merry and make Christmas. sure, yes, and Merry Christmas. Make sure that you guys are following us on Instagram. We're at Cocktails Podcast. I'm at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean D. And until next week, you guys, goodbye. goodbye. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you.